role model was, was definitely a massive support when it came to dealing with anxiety and depression. There was stages where I had some real, real lows and I was lucky to have a strong man there on the training there to help pull me out of them. I did hit a stage in life where I didn't know what direction to go to or what direction to go in um, and unfortunately at that stage I decided to take an attempt at my own life. Unfortunately it was unsuccessful. Um, a strong man is what picked me back up and, and got me going again so it's always been, for the past seven years, it's been a huge part of my life and going forward I expect it to be an even bigger part um, of what I want to achieve. But um, certainly, you know, I'm not suggesting everybody out there go, becomes a strong man, but there's a sport and there's a, a fitness goal, I believe, for everybody. And it's amazing how much you can help your mental health um, by training and, and getting into the gym and focusing on something. It just helps to clear your mind and take your mind off things. Inspire Inspire's been going now for um, three years we've been up and going and every year it's just getting stronger and stronger and going from strength to strength. Um, it was a massive undertaking the open inspire. Um, at the time whenever I was going to open inspire I was um, I was working in banks and um, it was a, a job I really disliked and you know the idea of owning your own gym was sort of your, your dream job type of thing and um, I just decided to just go for it and with that came so much negativity there was a lot of positivity a lot of people backed us and supported us and said this is going to be amazing this is going to be great but you also got a lot of people trying to shut you down straight away from day one by saying you know it's it's not going to be a success and it's not going to work, blah, blah, blah. That I wasn't good enough and the system wasn't good enough to make it work, but Inspire has became something absolutely massive in the three years it's been going. You know, there's very few people from Northern Ireland don't know what Inspire Gym is. Um, and it, it's been a lot of hard work on myself, but it's definitely been the team of people that I've had with me and working with me. industry is such a hungry, hungry world where a lot of people, um, you know, like to attack people on their, you know, things that they're down about, about their body image and stuff like that, and really attack them and, and try to take as, as much out of them as possible, and, and that's not what Inspire's about. Inspire's about, yeah, trying to help people um, if they need to change or they need to make a, a transformation in their life, we, we help them make it happen, happen but as time goes along, you know, we want them to build more confidence in themselves, feel better about themselves, um, and just enjoy being here and being training. I started Inspire in this, no, not December, January 2016, so just shortly after it opened. I started just behind sort of the counter as reception staff, and then I was training to be a PE teacher at the time. Started taking classes in here, enjoyed it, and thankfully Chris let me. Start PTN and I've been here for about well, two years now. Um, I think Inspire is different because there's such a wide variety of people here and it's so relaxed and laid back. I think that's why there is such a variety. You've got the strong men like Chris, bodybuilders like Dylan, a couple of other PTs, and then you've got novices right up to people that play sports and around for sports specific stuff. It's just, it's really nice seeing a different bunch of people and if I'm honest, it's just. Like I said, it's chilled out and I think that's what brings people in. I'd say, well, we've got a lot of space, which is always good. Um, there's everything you need, if I'm honest. 
we're in the cave at the minute or there's next door the main gym there's so much to do and again we're pretty friendly so you shouldn't be scared to come in. The hardest bit of this is walking through the doors until you realise it's actually not that bad. Uh, I've been working in Spire since God must be about November 2015 I think. I think we've been open three years I hope, <laughs> I think, <laughs> I hope I'm right. Um, but yeah since November 2015 um, so uh, originally started with um, I used to train in a different gym um, and then Chris had put up on the um, on Facebook and um, that it was well there was a new gym sort of opening and he put up like an athlete sponsorship scheme um, and I was like a junior bodybuilder at the time still am um, but he was putting up like an athlete sponsorship scheme and I applied for it and then he had called me down and we had a sort of big chat and that and he offered me a job so I started working there and was there in the open day and been here ever since. So far in um, bodybuilding, I've won um, NIFMA Junior Bodybuilding. Uh, that was my first competition. I've also won uh, UK BFF Junior Physique. And I was also invited to the British Championships that were held over in Nottingham. And for me, Inspire Gym has allowed me to do that. It's you know allowed me to train hard. It has all the equipment that I need. And it's just been a, a huge help in my bodybuilding career. There's plenty of ways that Inspire um, can help you, like, Physically, of course, it's a gym, you know, what else can you expect? But mentally is probably the biggest thing, especially for myself and, you know, um, Chris, I know that for a fact, but um, like for myself, um, like training isn't just, you know, coming in and lifting weights and sort of getting fit, healthy, stronger, better, faster sort of thing. You know, it's all about improving your mental health. Like if I've had a if I've had a crap day, um, you know, I come train. If I've been happy, I come and train. Sad, come train. Angry, same thing. It's you know, it's a stress relief. It's an antidepressant. You know, it's without having to you know go go down the route of medication. Like I've always you know, like you know, resorted to training for you know whatever any emotion that I'm feeling and um, whatsoever. And there have been a lot more people in here with you know in worse cases than myself, um, where you know they've struggled quite badly and they've had to go down the routes of medication and that. And I've actually witnessed it and um, that you know training can you know completely change your mindset and how you think about you know how you go about your daily life. Um, it's just constantly changing your mood and you know constantly you know upgrading the way you think about things it's 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 hard to describe if you haven't really like gone through it but it's you know it really raises your confidence and your self-esteem and the people that you meet as well and other stories that you can talk about and you know all the conversations that you have it's like a it's a game changer you know it's not just for fitness it's for your mental and physical health Boss wouldn't be included at all in the way that I've described my relationship with Chris, like at all. Not in the entirety that I have known him, what I ever say he was my boss. He's literally just like family to me and I am to him as well, you know, it's it's just the way we sort of see each other, like we were just always best friends, um, just almost like brothers, like, you know, we just had such a good bond. Um, and like we just we did like we basically did everything together at a time you know it was literally went training all the time just the different gyms around belfast and you know it was just literally you know best friends multiplied by 10 sort of thing it was we were just like constantly taking the piss out of each other and all the rest of it as you do but yeah i would say we we're definitely more like brothers than anything So when Inspire first opened, it was it was really exciting, but obviously it was the first business like really like anyone in our family has like opened up. So it was a wee bit scary, but we all believed in Chris, so we knew it would be fine. And there was a lot of work. It was really, really like built from scratch, like you know dad and me and like everyone was here painting and um, there was just a lot of work involved but it all came together like so well and especially like I think that's what makes it more special to us because it literally was like 
just a bare building like there was even gravel and like everything lying about and we really all did come in and like work together as a family and it was really nice memories to have as well you know like having all that so yeah um, so yes, I started the gym properly in January with Chris um, and I just decided last year um, was my first year being self-employed um, and I wasn't really happy myself that whole year um, so I obviously comfort it and with work I was just eating and working and I just wasn't looking after myself and I noticed with work because I was putting on the weight I was starting to have a sore back and have like problems with my knees and stuff and I was just tired so I messaged Chris in January and be like right this is it I want you to train me I want a, like this is my goal blah 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 and yeah it's really really turned like my life around like crazy I'm so much more positive I'm so much more happier and it's really good for me and Chris as well like we bond we weirdly bond through our PT station <laughs> as brother and sister but yeah I'm so happy I've done it for myself and it is crazy how much going to the gym like helps so much like I literally hate when I miss it like I really enjoy it it like helps me de-stress like on good days it makes me feel good like I just am really really loving it and especially at this gym like everyone's so friendly and nice and yeah Strongman career started whenever I was about 19 or 20. Um, I played rugby um, all through my teens. I was an absolute rugby fanatic, and I just sort of got fed up with the rugby world and wanted to move into something different. Um, and I started. Um, I seen strongman, uh, loved the idea of it, and started doing weight training for the first time. So I only started weight training whenever I was about 19, and. Um, I naturally was really, really strong. Like I was always, always, always a big boy. Um, always as a kid, I was just always a big child. And then this was a sport. All of a sudden, that it was completely okay to be big in. And um, strength-wise, I was always very, very naturally strong. Whenever I started training weights, it, it all adapted very, very quickly. And when I was twenty, I done my first also strongest man competition, which I think I came ninth in. Um, and I just took it from there and as a junior I had a, I had a sort of great career in, in, um, in Strongman, I was two times Junior Ireland's Strongest Man and I was second at Junior UK Strongest Man um, and things were really 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 sort of taken off and it was the whole Strongman thing that, that allowed me to develop this image and become pretty well known within the town um, and then having that image was what able able me to be able to open up the gym and be able to get enough followers and enough people coming into the gym. Strongman as I say regards helping me in the past when mental health was was a huge thing and you know when I say strongman like strongman is what I did but the fitness and the training and the weightlifting and strength training it's that that helped you know being able to train, being able to re release the negativity, being able to um, release loads of endorphins your body, be able to feel better about yourself is what helped the, I would say strongman that helped me but it was just training that helped me at the end of the day and when we opened and Inspire like, that was exactly what we wanted everybody else to get out of Inspire you know, I, I, I needed Inspire to be a place that members would get so much more than just a body transformation or, or changing their, their shape or appearance or getting stronger or perform better at their sport all that is all possible just for training but it's the mental side of things I really wanted everybody to get out of it. So we quickly started to basically um, boost people's knowledge about that, boost people's knowledge about mental health and how mental health, um, how, how training can help people's mental health and we wanted people to realise that these additional benefits you can get out of your training. I've known Chris for probably 
I would say around about 10 years. Um, he was a, a young guy coming into strongman, um, bright eyed and bushy tailed, um, very much um, new to the game. Um, on the other hand, for me, I'd, I'd been in and around the, the circuit with it uh, once before and was trying to have another go. Um, we were competing, I think it was, I think it was Ireland's strongest man, and uh, we uh, spent a bit of time in each other's company, got on um, from the word go. Um, and from there, you know, the friendship's built up. Uh, Chris and I have, we've competed together. Um, I've run shows that he's competed in. Uh, he has uh, run shows with me. We've, we've done it together as a, as a partnership. We've run several events, uh, some of them pretty successful. And, uh, you know, we've, we've, we've just been good pals. We're both massive fans of Strongman. We love the sport. It's something that we've, uh, we've you know, we're both very passionate about. And. Uh, you know, we just uh, we just became good, really good friends. Uh, with regards to his, uh, his, his, his sexuality, uh, came out uh, to me uh, personally as a gay man um, just over a year ago, and uh, we've been good friends. And obviously, the, the community that we spend so much time in, uh, the strongman community, you know, it's all very uh, alpha male orientated. You know, throwing weights around the gym and this kind of stuff. And Chris. Um, uh, was quite, I noticed we were at an event, we were running an event together um, and he was quite nervous, he wasn't quite himself around me um, and I, I thought something was maybe wrong with him in his personal life or something like that and because I wasn't in his company, just me and him for quite a long time, I didn't get the chance to see, ask him if, really if he was okay um, and he said uh, when we're going back to the hotel, oh, can I jump in the, in the van with you and I knew when he said that he had something to tell me and uh, he Told me straight out that uh, he, uh, I was the sort of last person on the on the on the high uptick list, I think, as we put it, that he wanted to tell face to face about his, uh, his sexuality and that he'd, he'd come out as a gay man, and um, that was that really for me. I mean, it was it's no big deal to me, um, you know. He's, he's, he's my pal and will remain so regardless, you know, but. Uh, I suppose there was a little element of surprise because I've, I've known Chris so long and in so many different uh, uh, circumstances. You know, we've done so much, you know, together, and uh, it, you know, it never been something that we'd really, you know, that had really ever come up or had ever even given a lot of thought to. I think Chris and I have spent more time on the business side of things, running shows, doing this, doing that, than we have socially. We've never really on a regular basis gone out for a beer or anything like that. It's not really been our thing, you know. I'm not a um, somebody that does a lot of that sort of thing anyway. Chris, as an athlete, something I noticed um, with Chris is, and just going back to his sexuality for a, for a moment there, he had retired probably more times than I have from Strongman. And I genuinely believe, we've never had this conversation, I must actually speak to him about it, but I think that may have been down to the fact that he was nervous about his sexuality, about the eventually that he was going you know, to come out and how it would be accepted in the Strongman community. Um, but I think, I, I hope, but I think Chris, as he said, he has mentioned this to me, was surprised by the response because he, it was just sort of taken in everybody's stride. Nobody really reacted. Nobody really, well, nobody really cares, really. You know what I mean? He's still Chris, he's still our mate, he's still one of the strong men. You know, what difference does it make to us? Absolutely none. If he's happy, we're happy. It's as simple as that. You know, I don't think you need to over scrutinise anything with, with, with that scenario. But Chris, I'd noticed personally um, since he came out as a gay man how much his uh, focus has improved as an athlete. Um, he definitely wants to win Ireland's Strongest Man. He's always wanted that title. Right going back to the day when me and him were sat, um, I think it was Dublin or somewhere like that, um, and he was the young lad and I was still the old man as I am now, as I was, as I was then as I am now. Um, uh, he's always wanted that title and I think he's more than capable of winning that. He's already PB in, in his lifts. His deadlift, his log press, those are the key lifts to strength. If he works on his fitness and gets his mobility up, then yeah, I'd back him. She
So whenever, whenever I was at school, not there, the school, school was pretty shitty for me. I never had a good time at school. Uh, I got bullied a lot. Like being, being overweight was just a pure target thing for getting bullied about. You know, uh, there's loads of things that, that people get teased on and bullied about in school. And for me, I was an overweight kid, and, and and that's what I was targeted about. Um, the school I was in was a it was a very football dominated school, and I played a lot of rugby. So like. Whenever I was playing rugby with my mates and that there on a Tuesday or Thursday night, it was brilliant because like somebody my size, that's what I fit it into. That's what I was good at. I was sort of respected a lot, you know, by the guys. But then go back in the football school, you just didn't you just didn't fit in with the other guys there. Like I was rubbish at football, so I hated football and um, I, I couldn't play it and you never fit it in. So you stood out as being somebody different and you know now, now I know that difference good, um, and like I, I like being different. But back then, and, and being a teenager, different is something where other people, when they don't understand it, then they they, they bully it, and they uh, simply just because they don't understand uh, why that person's different. <clears throat> so there's a lot of stuff that went on in school that I never really processed with or, or dealt with. There's loads of it that I kept to myself. Uh, I don't I didn't want to worry parents and. I didn't want to talk to teachers because if I talked to teachers, it was just going to escalate into a bigger thing, and I, it's something that I never, you know, I never dealt with, talked about, or processed. And I, looking back now, I could see that that went into sort of my later teens and, and my early twenties. You know, I, I went with a lot of low self-esteem, and the strong man came around, and, and, and strong man helped a lot initially at the start, but you know, there was just so much there that I never. I just so much hatred for myself and so much hatred for the way I looked and stuff like that there and it was um, it was difficult because like it was constant highs and lows so like when I was doing strongman and that there um, and I was doing well at shows or I won a competition you know I got this high but then I went straight back to the lows whenever I had that sort of self-hate for how I looked and stuff like that because it's something you can never get away from it it's going to be Every mirror you walk by, every reflection you walk by, you're constantly reminded, um, and you're took back to being that child again and, and getting all that teasing and all that bullying and all the shit that went on. Um, you're just taken back to that place, even though you're running around at the Junior Ireland's Strongest Man, you, you have Irish deadlift records and so many titles, you know, respect it for so many people for what you've achieved, but you still get drawn back to what it was like and, and as, as a teenager and to how you were made to feel then. So a lot of that um, wasn't processed well and a lot of things sort of happened in, in my, my early 20s that again, you know, I was just a wild person for pushing things to the back of my mind and not dealing with things. Um, the death of my nana, somebody who was really, really close to me and I probably didn't grieve and, and deal with that there the way I should have done. And, um, I was constantly, you know, getting brought down by by how I looked and by anxiety, and I just everything just kept sort of seeming that it was getting worse and worse and worse, and I just got to the stage where I I just genuinely would have been happy if that day was my last day, and you know, it it just there was no way of going forward. Like you know, at that time I didn't see any way of going forward and. Um, I just, I was just happy to let that be the last day, and um, I decided. Can't really remember what all happened that that specific day, but I decided that um, I was, that was the day that I was going to take an overdose, and I, my parents were out shopping, and I expect them to be out for the whole day, and um, my wee sister. Um, I think was in the house, but I told them I wasn't feeling well, I was going to go to bed for sleep. Um, and then all I remember doing was getting all the meds ready and I don't know, for some reason I just couldn't, like, I didn't want mum and dad to blame themselves. So for some reason I messaged them just to say that I loved them and that's all I said. And they they realised something wasn't right and something was going on. And, their shopping trip luckily got cut short. They were on their way down the road anyway, and I remember lying in bed, and all here was the the back door sort of smashing open, and um, mum um, coming up the stair. I heard 
the dad shouting at Holly, saying, um, I told you to keep an eye on him. And then it was, it was Holly's, um, it was Holly's crying in that there that, that I heard and that I'll always, that stayed with me since. Dad come in just shouting, you know, what did you take, what have you took, what have you took. And out of anger and frustration, he put his sort of his fist through the wall. And he's not angry at me; he's just angry at what all happened. And Mum and Holly were, were were crying and sort of screaming and that there. And my mum sat down and gave me a hug. Holly sat down and gave me a hug. And um, luckily, that it was, you know, damage hadn't been done type of thing. And it was, um, I, I, I was so lucky because I seen what, what happens to your family whenever you do something like that. And a lot of people who, who go down them lines and they do that, they don't get an opportunity to see what it does to your family. And there were so many times, years after that there, like, like so many times where, you know, I, I just didn't, I, I wanted to do it again, but I just couldn't do it because it's just picture of my wee sister. And, what it would do to her, and what it would do to my mum and my dad. And, you know, I I was lucky I got to see that, and it was literally, you're talking 10, 10 minutes, half an hour. That could have been the total other way around. And it's because I seen that, and I seen the, the pain, and the, the, like, and it is pain that it put into them, that it stopped me from ever, ever doing that again. And, you know, there was times that definitely I, I'd have loved to have done it, I'd love to have just got away from everything and stopped everything, but I just would never ever do that to them. And... The, 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 the main thing about it with me is that I didn't, I didn't reach out, I didn't talk to anybody, I didn't tell people I was struggling. Um, as bad as it was, you know, I might have just said that I'm pissed off or I'm unhappy, but I never actually told anybody like how bad it was, what I was thinking about doing. Um, and like, if I would have done, like after that happened, then I got help and I, I got looked after and I, I started to realize, right, I, I don't want to be like this anymore. And I started to do things and, and coach myself and, and I do loads of things to sort of take me forward to make sure that I would never go back to there again. So I was quite young, um, it sounds so silly but it is just the truth and it is what it is, but I was downstairs in the living room and I was on the phone to my boyfriend at the time and I was so caught up on the phone with him chatting away or whatever and I just remember my mum like firing the door open and like screaming like in a panic where's Chris and I didn't know what was going on and my dad and my mum just both ran upstairs and ran into his bedroom. Um, but that is honestly, like the rest of it was just a blur. I just remember shouting and screaming and my mum crying. And to be honest, cause I was quite young, my mum and dad kind of kept that quite sheltered and away from me. Um, so I don't really, I can't really say too much about it, but I do just remember it was like an upsetting day. And even like, for a long period after that, you know, in the house wasn't really nice and, you know, it just wasn't a good atmosphere. Um, but I was quite young, so I can't really say too, you know, too many details because I don't really know much. Um, but it was upsetting for me because after it, my mom actually sent me a text, but I was already on the phone being like, is Chris okay? Like, can you check on Chris? Because he sent them a text message and I had no idea because I was so caught up in something so silly. And it's just a wee bit upsetting that I didn't know he was going through so much. And at the time, maybe me talking to him or just even going upstairs and like chatting to him would have like changed something. Do you know what I mean? You just always think like that. It's really weird because for me, Chris at that a, like that person isn't Chris anymore. Like they're two totally different people. Um, especially because he was so low. Um, during that period of his life um, 
and now to, it, it's really weird because I've just always known Chris as the way he is and he's happy and he's got a big heart and he's always been my big brother he's been protective over me so I've known that since I was like a child you know like all my life so for him to be so low at that time was so upsetting but to know now that he's much happy it's crazy to even think that it's the same person and it just shows you that if you keep going and you keep trying like things will get better um, and honestly like there is some days as cheesy as it is but I am just so happy for him like it is just amazing how far he's came but I just love him so much and I'm so happy that he's here and the things just everything happens for a reason and I'm so glad that that day my mum and dad did obviously come home and stop something terrible from happening and I'm just so glad he's still here because I couldn't imagine my life without my big brother. If I would have just reached out and, and talked to somebody at the start well then you know, that situation would, would never have came around, you know, I, I could have got the help and all that I got later on. And like, it's not, it's almost becoming cheesy now and it's almost becoming a fad. With people saying, you know, you have to talk, you have to talk out. And it, it's, it's, it's so fucking true, but like, if you just get somebody to talk to you, like, not everybody could talk to family and friends and that's fine. People don't want to put that burden onto their loved ones and stuff. But if you can't talk to your family and friends, there's plenty of professionals out there, there's plenty of mental health coaches, there's, there's plenty of places you can go to and you can get help. But, you know, it doesn't have to be your family, it doesn't have to be your friends. You don't have to put that burden onto the people you love if you don't want to. Um, obviously, seeing someone you love struggle with anxiety and depression isn't easy. Um, as Chris is my brother, he's missed out on a lot of things, um, like nights out, birthday parties, like family occasions. Um, and of, when I was like a bit younger, I never fully understood it. I just thought he was being awkward or, you know, it was difficult that way as well. I always got frustrated because obviously I wanted my brother there. Um, but now I, I totally understand. Um, and it is just really upsetting that someone has to go through that. Um, but at the same time, he's come such a long way and he's progressed massively. Um, and yeah, it's, he's in a lot more of a positive place now and he does go to family things. And now we can actually like have so many memories together. The anti-bullying campaign at Learn High was such a big thing for Chris because obviously that's our previous high school. Um, and I, I just couldn't believe he did it. Like he actually got up at assembly and stood in front of everyone. And like that is just amazing for someone who struggles with anxiety to do that. It's just showing younger kids like how far he's like came. Do you know what I mean? Um, especially with my job, like I have a lot of young clients who go to that school, and for them to come in and tell me in confidence, like you know how much that like helps them or like change they like you know how they how they think at school and yeah I just that's just really special for me and Christopher for him to do that I'm just so proud of him uh, like the fact that he attempted to sort of like take his own life is you know it's something that's that you try not to think about uh, and like to be in the mindset of wanting to take your own life um, is like a horrible, horrible thing. Like to be so down and like in such a low place, um, like you have to have gone through some mad, mad shit, you know, especially the stuff that Chris did. And you know, like when you're at the point where the whole world's against you and you feel like there's no other way out except from, you know, taking your own life, it's, you know, it's a shit thing, but like, it just nothing would ever be the same without the man you know it's like he's given me so much and like um like helped me through a lot of my own shit um, just like he has for everyone else you know like he's changed you know thousands of lives and if he wasn't here then none of that would have happened you know but instead he decided to be a lot stronger and stand up and like you know almost like attack head on you know his own problems and use that as like a fuel to help other people as well, you know, through theirs. And you know, if he hadn't have done that, um, like 
so many more people would be in the same position as him, you know, um, like wanting to take their own lives, but instead he did, you know, you know, the un completely opposite of a selfish thing, you know, he was, you know, he was a lot more brave about it, and he just sort of stood up for it, you know, with regards to being gay and depression, anxiety, you know, all the mental health issues that come with that. Um, but, you know, in conclusion to that, it's like, you know, it just wouldn't be the same without him sort of thing, and I'm, you know, I'm obviously glad he's still here. I mean, like, I love him. He's, you know, he's literally a brother to me, so, like, it'd just be more along the lines of just how much I appreciate him and stuff and how much he's done for me and that, you know, all the things that you don't exactly, you know, how to tell someone when they're actually with you. Um, because, you know, it's just being like a strong man sort of thing, you know, like the butch sort of persona um, that you don't really get in tact with your emotions as much. Um, but, yeah, keeping it short and sweet, just I love the man and I appreciate it and he's done for me, like, just a high proud am. Just literally so, so proud of the man. He's literally come through so much shit and trauma. That, you know, he's stronger. You know, literally being a strong man, everyone's like, fucking hell, he's strong. But, you know, it's that's not the real strength that he has. His real strength comes from, like, his mental capacity and, like, you know, how he's strong that he's been to come through, you know, everything that he has done and, you know, to overcome, you know, suicidal tendencies and, you know, being so down, so, you know, I would definitely be of high proud arm of him. I came out whenever I was 28, and up until that stage, things has never really, you know, it never really affected me much, it never really held me back much, but I was getting to a stage in life where it was starting to hold me back, and it was starting to make me unhappy, and I decided to come out, but... Whenever I was coming out, when I got to that stage, you know, after years and years of thinking, the only thing that, that really mattered to me anymore, and the only thing that does matter whenever you come out is sort of what your your friends, your close friends, and what your family think. Um, and that, that, that was the only thing that was really important to me. Like, coming out, you know, I'm very well known in my own town. Um, obviously, being a strong man and that, you know, there was a lot of people, sort of a lot of public people, you know, people who aren't close friends but are friends and you know if I sat and worried about what all the opinions of all them people were going to be it would it would have been a mission impossible to ever come out so I came out to my family and my family were brilliant with it and really supportive and it wasn't easy to come out but whenever I did um, you know things were things were it, it was a lot different than what I was expecting it to be initially at the start um, my family was brilliant, um, a lot of my close friends were brilliant, some friends weren't, um, some friends I guess aren't friends anymore but you know I ended up meeting so many more friends since then and gaining more friends since then and you know it, it, it's something that has never been a regret but an adjustment more so than anything. Um, I remember years and years ago the first person I did tell uh, was my best friend Graham. Um, he was my training partner and, and straw man and that there. And I came out to Graham years ago to say that I was bisexual, and um, it was a bit it was scary to do it. Um, but he, he basically turned around and was like, right, okay, so are we deadlifting today or are we squatting today? And, and that was it. And the, the likes of him, it, it's never it's never changed him in any way, shape, or form. He's he's always remained, uh, you know, my, my best mate and. It, it, it never ever changed our relationship at all, but you do notice with some people it has. You know, some people are still friends, but you know maybe they don't like to be overly close. They don't like to be seen to be overly close. Um, and there's just there's just things you have to adjust, I suppose. Like you know, you have to understand everybody's um, how, you know how comfortable everybody is with it, and like you know people support you and, and, and people will be fine with it. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be 100 percent comfortable with it all. Um, but since I've come out, I've never had any regrets, and you know it's a ma massive thing that whenever you do come out and whenever you're being 100% you, like see the amount of opportunities that's opened up to me over the past 
you know, year and a half has been massive, like, and my business has boomed. Um, whenever I start being myself and advertising, me as a personal trainer is exactly who I am. My business took off, my gym took off. I got opportunities on MTV to go on the shows. Um, I got a lot more sort of um, followers and, and social media and stuff like that. You know, it's it's opened up a lot of doorways and it, it's brought in a lot of work. It's brought in, uh, you know, a, a, a lot of um, you know things to do that you would, I would never have got. You know, carrying on the life I was carrying on. So it, it's been an up and down roller coaster, but now the things have settled and. Everybody's adjusted, and I've adjusted. Um, like going forward, it just uh, life seems so much easier now. Yeah. So the one question I get asked a lot is, um, you know, what was it like coming out as a strongman, you know, in the sport? And the the long and short of it is, it, it wasn't that big a deal to a lot of people. Um, the guys like are like totally supportive of it. Nobody's ever said anything about it. Um, my friends in the sport, they've been a hundred percent about it, and it, it just doesn't seem to be that big a deal. And like that says so much about the sport of strongman. Like like you know these are the, you know the biggest most masculine men in the most masculine sport around, and nobody cares. Like nobody cares at all. And like you know I have no negativity, and they've been so supportive of me. Uh, Rob Kearney, who came out a couple of years ago, um, he seemed to have the same, you know, that nobody makes a deal out of it, it's, it's not that big a deal. Northern Ireland isn't an ideal country to come out in, you know, it is. It's getting better and better, but it's still very much so behind the times. Like, I remember whenever I was a teenager, seeing stuff in newspapers and stuff on TV with, with politicians, you know, talking absolute garbage. And like, you know, I was I was about 14, 15 at the time, and I remember seeing a politician had put in the, had said publicly about how your gay people are perverts, and you know, like at 14 years old, you just all you see is people on the TV and people in the newspaper, and you, you you think these people are somebody in life, but and it, it it seems to be a big thing, and for a long time I thought it was just like the most wrongest thing ever um, to be gay. But whenever you get older, um, you start to realise that these people are, are nobodies, they're nothings, and their opinions just, just are, uh, it's worthless opinions by, you know, idiots is the only way you can describe them. You know, it gets a bit easier as you get older, but definitely like as a, as a young person, you know, hearing stuff like that, it's just, it's just so wrong, you know, and it's just so wrong that, that people like that are, are still politicians in this country and are still in charge of this country and they're still what, what, what's holding us back in so many ways. Man, he could win the Ulsters. He could go as far as just really wants to go in the sport. It's all about putting your mind to it, putting the work and the effort in that's required to get that high level. 
it's more than capable of it. It's uh, just sometimes hard when you have other commitments and you have your own work and the gym and other things in life to to focus on. It's hard just to 100% focus on strong man. But yeah, yeah, I think Chris could win Ireland strongest man. Yeah, well, he's always uh, he always had an interest in the rugby and always had a passion for it. Um, and training obviously is a big part of rugby. And yeah, yeah, from then. He just progressed on to three weights and stuff and then on it a strong man. Rugby, rugby was a strong point for in many ways his weight helped him, especially the position that he played as a prop. But uh, people can be cruel with their comments and things whenever children are carrying a bit of weight, especially at that young age. Um, so I'm sure, yeah, I did find it difficult and I'm sure that he found it difficult in school too with comments and things about his weight as well. Christopher works hard and Anthony puts his mind to and he's thoughtful, he's caring and he's not just interested in uh, himself, he's also interested in other people and with his attitude towards training etc uh, it's bound to be a success. I think really it's I've lived my life and I've lived it the way that I want to live it and why should I tell other people how to live their lives? They're your children and you don't just bring them into this world to if things don't work out the way you want things to work out and the way your thoughts and beliefs might have been or are, you don't just dump them because uh, you're not happy. They're your kids, and your children are the most precious thing in your life. And you love them, and you keep on loving them. I always love them. Across the sexuality. It's his life, and I wish him all the best. And as for other other people with kids, don't stop loving your children just because their sexuality is different to yours. So who are you waving at? There's a wee boat out there. <laughs> it's not going to see you from here. <laughs> so obviously me and you sort of met through Aware and I and that there, but how long have you been sort of doing the mental health work now anyway then? Because you were at it before sort of I came along. Yeah, well I think really from my recovery, yeah. you know, I've been, well, well I've been clean from drugs and all, what about 15, 16 years? But I think really the last 10 years the, that I've I've been trying, well, I've been using my music to kind of, I don't, I think it's taken me the last 10 years to form what, what my sound is now, and it's a mental health musical mission. Mm. But I think with 10 years ago, I started realizing that my songs, because they were about my life, 
then I was going, well, if they're, uh, uh, you know, I, I can hear other people's stories in my songs too. Mm. So I was always talking about mental health. Now we're starting to turn a corner, loads of, lots more, you know, high profile people are coming out talking about it. Before that, there was nobody talking yeah. about mental health. And I remember people telling me to shut up. Ten years ago, people tell, and I was saying, you know, even then I was saying, but hold on, your mental health is like your physical health. You should just be able to, to discuss it openly. What are you telling me to shush for? Yeah. And that, that was the sad part. So, you, you know, the last couple of years has seen it starting to turn a corner, and that's what I'm glad. I'm, you know, nobody's doing that anymore. Mm. Nobody's saying shush. No, no. It's well, probably not, because yeah. I have a public profile, so they won't say it to me yeah. anymore. But you know yourself. Yeah, I, I don't even think it. Like, uh, we're levels now. It's getting talked about a lot more now. It seems to be parents are talking to children and all a lot more about it. But I yeah. remember a sort of similar thing. Whenever I first um, with Aware and I, and I first done the the the, the talk on TV. Um, you know, there was people who used to work in my gym at the time turned around and sort of was like. Is this really the route we want to go down? Like, you know, not everybody understands it or gets it. Yeah. But like, yeah. You know, now, like, obviously, then people's not working there anymore, and the team that I have now are a good team, and everybody's behind it and everybody's supporting it. But and it makes all the difference, doesn't it? Yeah. When you have that foundation, to me, you, you know, I had a CPM once, and I say this in the shows, I had a, a community psychiatric nurse, and he said that where our mental health is like a house mm. and every house needs a good foundation and your team is exactly the same it needs yeah. a good foundation and what he had said to me if you build a brick over brick without cement without concrete without you know substance then it's all going to fall apart the more bricks you put on top of it it's all going to fall apart mm -hmm. because of too much pressure on it you have a good foundation anything is possible yeah. and if everybody believes in the same thing then there's only one way to go keep going forward keep going forward and that way you can change lives that way you you can make a dent in the stigma especially here in northern ireland mm. you know we have the highest rate of suicide in the, from the whole of the uk mm -hmm. you know and it's people like us that are standing up and being counted who are making a dent in mental health yeah. On the ground, you know what I mean? I always say, anybody that's working within mental health, they're mental health warriors, and that's what we are, kid. Yeah. You know, warriors. That's sort of like the, the pros go, like, the pros of the whole thing go sort of, you know, obviously helping people is the, the, the biggest pro of the whole thing. Of and course. The things that come out of, but there's also, I think, working in mental health, there's, there's plenty of cons behind it too. Mm. Um, regards, I suppose, mostly on the the effect that you've talked about it before, but the effect your shows have on you and um, the messages and stuff like that there. You yeah. Get like, I think it's like, obviously being used doing well now, but it's really important to make sure that we look after ourselves. Yeah, of course, and, we, and we've and we discussed this, you know, when you're killing me on the treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we have, we've discussed it, and even, you know, I just done a UK tour there three weeks on the road and and that my show is very intense you've been there you see how intense it is and I was struggling I now realize that I can't do that amount of gigs in a row because of the content that I'm giving the audience so we're always learning and because we're aware of our self care, self -care mm -hmm. we're always aware of our own behavior because if our mental health doesn't function, if we don't have good mental health, we're going to be no use to yeah. anybody that we're trying to help. You know, yeah. and that's that's the main thing that yeah. we have to be aware all the time. No, you're right. You can't you can't help anybody unless you're in a good place yourself. Right? No, it's, no. It's the whole thing with charity starts at home type of thing. Well, this is it. You know, but the thing is too, because you know, people like us are. Are fixers we want to help people mm. we want to help you know we want to fix the world and and you know I said at the show the other night you were there and I, I, I had to say you know 
I love you and I'm so grateful you're here but please don't come up after the show and say to me about your problems I would love to listen to your problems but in order for me to function to do this show and especially straight after I'm so raw because I've given I've opened my all those pores yeah. and and I would never have been able to say that before yeah. because I, my mind is strong enough now to cope with that and to, to own it and say to people, you know, I'm here for you, but I'm not a professional counsellor. No. There are places like a word, like like Samaritans, yeah. where you can go to, you can go to your GP, you can you can get help and, and keep asking for help and keep searching out for support. And there's that much information online now about depression, about suicidal thoughts, that you can tap into that, a wealth of knowledge online. And it just becomes, we have to be very careful that we don't take on everybody's problem because that's all we, because we've been there yeah. and we know what it's like in the dark. And, and we don't want anybody, I, personally, I don't want anybody to go what I went through. And that's why I have a personal mission because if I can change one person's life, and I know you feel this way, because we've both been there, we've both wanted to die. It has gripped us so bad that we, we didn't want to be looking out at this lovely view. There, we, we might not be sitting here. Yeah. Had we succeeded in, in, in trying to kill ourselves, we might not be here to help people. So now, as long as we we take care of ourselves and, and advise, educate and inform. That's yeah. for me what the biggest thing with mental health is. We give people the information and, and they can go and get professional help and, and it all adds up. It all, if it just makes them think of one thing. You know, I, I started off trying to love myself by looking in the mirror every day and it was really uncomfortable you know that yeah. kind of yeah you're doing okay yeah. and you you know this you know when you when you're when you're in, you're competing and all you have to believe in yourself yeah. if you don't believe yeah, you there's there's nothing's gonna happen you're not gonna lift that no. you're not gonna push that pull that you're not gonna do it you have to believe so when you look in the mirror that's what i tell people that's what I had to do for months, every morning, every night. I said, Kaz, go on, girlie. You're doing, you're doing okay, love. You're doing okay. I'm sure, it's not, it's not just enough to get you by to keep you alive. Sometimes. So, what's what's next, Lord, for Kaz? What's next for me? Do you know what? I. People ask me this all the time. Well, you know, what, what's, what's your big, what's your end game, or you know, especially in music, people think, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna make it soon. Well, and to me, there is no it because I'm literally taking it as it comes. I don't know. And if next week, uh, I make it sound Ben able, and I'll label the next week. And after that, I might want to record in a single. And I'm literally going with the flow now because I can't plan. And I think depression taught me that. Yeah. To come, my recovery has taught me to live in that moment and enjoy what's happening. And not to put myself under pressure. And you know what? Things have just started happening more because I don't have that. Yeah, like a, a lot of people have messaged me and sort of said, you know, but uh, more so regards the mental health side of things, but most of regard the business side of things, you know, about success mm. and all, and like, I, I have always been a person that has never really valued money to yeah, any extent, sense. like, you know, it's never really zeros in my bank account, it's never really meant a lot, I'd rather enjoy the moment, enjoy where I am, but mm. there's one thing that, that I've, that I've learned, you know, you know, what is success, is it the big business, the nice car, the nice house, but for me, it just comes down to happiness, if I'm, if I'm happy every day, or the majority of the day, you see that I'm happy. Mm. That that to me is what being su successful is. And I agree. Yeah, I agree. Like, whether it's like you know, <clears throat> it's being the best in the world, or if it's just being where you are and being happy. But I think there's a, there, there's a difference, 
you know, and I think people confuse this. Um, business is business, you know, there's a, it's a completely different thing to trying to get through the day. Yeah. You know, there, I know lots of people who can go to work nine to five mm. and it not affect them, it's when they come into normal life. Yeah. I know lots of people, it's their work that stresses them out. Mm. So it's it's very different. And, and, and then when they don't sort through the nine to five, then their whole life becomes troubled. But you, you have been at that level where you have had the car and the, and, and the nice things because of your competitive nature. Yeah. Now you're flipping that and using, of course that's your job, that's, that's your business, that's what you get paid for, but you're now using that to benefit other people. No. You know, when, when, when I say, when I say burr strong, I know exactly what it means. Yeah. You know, I'm safe. I know every time I go into the gym with you, I know you got my back. Yeah. Even though I moan. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my feelings. Where I'm looking to go now, go forward, like, things are a lot better now, regards my mental health, you know. Uh, there's way more good days than there is bad days, and I know now how to manage it a lot better. And it's, it's definitely, I, I believe the storm sort of been, been ruled type of thing and now it's looking forward at sort of good times coming so the the main thing is for me that my that my business is getting bigger and bigger it's growing it's growing and yeah the workload gets bigger too but um, i want to grow my business a lot more um, i want to when it comes to strongman um, i have this big void that he's filled where I, I, I really want to win Ireland's Strongest Man and that is what my main goal is going to be over the next two years is to win Ireland's Strongest Man, to get the Giants live show uh, and to try and get a podium finish at UK Strongest Man and there are things now that I generally believe with the support system I have around me, uh, where my head is at at the moment is far better than it's ever been and I believe that I can achieve that and I could do that and it would be a huge thing for me to do that and for me to achieve that. Um, but I think, as a, I think in UK and Ireland, strongman and the gay community needs somebody um, to step forward with that figure and to achieve success. So I have a load of pressure on myself to do it for me, but there's sort of like a bigger picture in the background as to why I feel I have to do it. Um, and the motivation that I've got for that going forward is massive and it's something I really believe that I can achieve.